So how do you come up with the perfect, unique name to represent your salon business? In this video, I'm breaking down the exact steps you need to take to make sure you find the name that represents you in the right way. So if this is the first time we meet, this is John Halberg from The Salon Business, bringing you ideas and strategies to help you attract more clients to your salon and ultimately grow your salon business. I release videos and tips and ideas and strategies just like this every week. So if you're serious about growing your salon business, I strongly recommend you hit that subscribe button and notification bell to make sure you're not missing out every week when I release new content. So coming up with a good salon name is a big deal. You know, whatever name you land on, this is going to stick with you for years. And your name is, I would argue, this most central part in your overall brand. So the name needs to represent who you are and what you stand for and resonate with the image and character of your salon and of your brand. So it's great that you're investing the time now to make sure that you really land on a name that you feel comfortable with and that will also last the test of time. So I'm going to take you through 10 different steps. So if you go through all of those, you will be significantly more likely to find a name that actually will stand the test of time and work for you. You know, it's very difficult to find something that ticks all those boxes. But, you know, if you tick at least the majority of them, you will be in a much better place than if you were just randomly choosing a name. So let's start with point number one. You need to understand your why. What I mean with that is like, why do your salon exist? What's your story? You know, what's the reason that you opened your salon in the first place? If you start to dig into what your story is about, that could give you a lot of different clues that you could inform you like of a good idea for your, for your salon and brand name. So let's say you started in a different country. Maybe your salon name should be in that language or use some type of verbatism from that language to give it something that is unique and that ties back with your story. Or whatever your story is, I'm sure you have one. Nailing down what that story is, you know, just writing it down for yourself. You might be able to find some golden nuggets in there that you can lift out and that can be become part of your name. And the second point is you need to understand your brand's character. So you can really think of your salon as a person rather than as a salon or as a brand that can make this easier. So is this a funny person? Is this a cool person? Is it an elegant person? Is it a classy person? Or, you know, what type of personality does your salon have? If you get clear on that, that will also help you narrow down what type of name you should have to actually represent that character that you have. Okay, so point number three, who is your ideal salon client? I'm sure you have someone in your clientele that you see once in a while that you really enjoy working with and you have others that you might not enjoy as much. Obviously, you want to attract the ones that you like. So by having a picture in front of you, who is that person when you come up with your name and think about your name, that will also help you build a brand for your salon that is more attractive towards that, that target client that you have. Okay, so we'll come to point number four. You know, the first three points is really about a lot about your brand. So laying those foundations in point number four, now it's time for the brainstorm. So now you just need to come up with as many ideas as you can you know, thinking about your brand heritage, the story of where is your salon coming from, any ideas you might have there, thinking about the character of the brand, is it a funny, is it a cool brand, and you'll start to brainstorm different ideas. And one of the best ways of doing this, I find, obviously you just find some time for yourself, get a pen and paper out. I prefer a pen and paper over, you know, keyboard, but you know, that's more for the creative side. And then you should also get some external inspirations. I'll also put a link below to my blog where you can find a lot of ideas on different salon names. Just go through those ideas, you know, don't, don't be too rational. If you find something that, like, oh, that sounded cool, put it down on the paper. If you find something else, you put it down. You know, don't limit yourself. Just let the creativity flow. Think about your story, your brand, where you're coming from. Look at different inspiration. Just pick the ones that seems, you know, emotionally right. Don't rationalize at this stage. Just get it down on the paper and we will, you know, narrow down those selections later. So you should now have brainstorm and have a lot of different name options on the table. Now we're getting to the phase where we need to start narrow that down, right? And to find the jewel in there that will be the name that you're going to stick with. So already in point number five, we start with that. Point number five is, is it immediately obvious to understand what, what this name is about? So do you really understand that you're a hair salon, that you're a nail salon by just hearing the name? You will use your name in a lot of different marketing touch points and to not lose interest of people who might be interested in what you have to offer. It's important that that comes across. Now, that doesn't mean that your name necessarily need to have hair or nail or salon or something like that in the word. But if it doesn't, you might want to add a tagline or something to make sure that you can clarify that and that that comes together all in a nice way. So point number six, is it easy to pronounce and spell the name? 
You know, today everybody who's looking for salons, they use Google or they go on Instagram. Can they spell the name or is it like super difficult to understand? It can sound really cool sometimes with these really unique names who are difficult to spell and pronounce. But if you go with that approach, you should be aware that that's also a limitation that people might not be able to find you or they might not be able to recommend you to a friend because they don't even know how to pronounce your salon name. So take that into consideration as well. So point number seven, can you find a good domain name for your salon name? In all your marketing going forward, you will most likely be promoting a URL or a web address back to your salon. You'll have your email address on the business card and you want to have a good domain name, so your .com address to represent your salon. As you know, more and more businesses are building a presence online. So, you know, good domain names becomes increasingly difficult to find. So if you're having a very unique name, that might not be a problem. If not, you might need to append something like the city name you're in or hair or salon or hair salon, nail salon or something to that name to find a good domain name. But that's a check that you can do as well that might help you narrow down your options as well. So point number eight, visualize the name. So not only does your name need to sound good, it needs to look good as well. And probably as soon as you've locked on the name, the next step will be to create a logo for your new salon business. So you want that to look good. So you probably already narrowed down the selection a bit with the previous points. But what you can do now is also try to visualize what could this look like as a logo just to give you some, some ideas which might also help you narrow down your selection. A tool that I think is awesome to do this with is called Canva. I'll leave a link in the description as well. If you want to use Canva there you can generate logos for free and to just see what it looks like. So point number nine, test your name. So you've probably been able to narrow down your selection of names a bit. The best way going forward from here is actually to test it on other people because you see People will not judge the name of your salon in the same way as you're doing. You're having a lot of thoughts in your head, you're rationalizing, thinking how does that fit with the image of me and you know, you have a lot of rational thoughts going on. But in the end, you know, clients and potential new clients, they will just judge your name by their gut. So the best is to actually test that gut feeling with some other people. So just show the name or say the name and just hear what do people say back? What do they associate that name with? And that can give you a lot of different clues on is this name that you're thinking about actually going in the right direction or is it not? So point number 10, trust your gut. You can be very rational about this. All the different 10 steps that I went through, they are important. They will help you come to a few of the you know, probably best options. But in the end, you can only trust your gut feeling of what is right. And that's more important than all the different rational elements that you can have in your head. So leave it for a few days when you have your selection and then just come back to it with a fresh pair of eyes and then just make the call based on what feels right in the stomach. And if you do that, I'm sure you will land on a name that is perfect for yourself. So to get more ideas just like the one I shared today, make sure you subscribe by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell below and you will be notified next time I release a new salon marketing idea or strategy to help your business grow.